Good afternoon, evening. I, I'm not too sure at this point. It's usually like that time of the transition where it's really like late afternoon, early evening. But hope you're having a great day. My name is Matt Williamson, and you're watching Married to College Esports. Uh, so today, uh, we have our League of Legends team going up against Oberlin College as part of the College League of Legends series. Uh, this should be a pretty even matchup. Uh, right now, the teams are already in the lobby. And I don't think they've started up just yet, but just in case, I'm going to get all the audio set up. So if we get in the champ select right away, that uh, we will have that uh, going for you. Uh, while we are getting things uh, set up for that, I'll go ahead and go over the starting roster. Well, just the roster for our League of Legends team. So in the top lane, we have MC Cressman, uh, Scott Cressman, Junglers MC Knox, Lucas Stanford. Uh, mid lane is MC Brimstone, Ian Darling. Uh, AD carry is going to be MC Larson, Brandon Larson. Uh, support is MC Cowboy, David Stratton. Our sub is uh, MC Moon, Kevin Zhang. I think it's John. I apologize if I mispronounced that. And then our, we have our coach, Drake Newsom. Uh, so as far as College League of Legends go, our this is the fourth round. And we are one and two. Uh, in the in the matchups here but i think this one's going to be uh, at least more even than some of the uh, other opponents so we'll see how it goes uh, right now we're just basically waiting for uh, everyone to get things set up i don't see a lot of discussion in the game lobby but there is a separate uh, chat that's used for the uh, college league of legends so that might be where a lot of the discussion is uh, going on right now so I think uh, as soon as they get things underway, we will uh, get everything started up. Uh, while we are waiting for it, uh, I have a couple of announcements and uh, things that are just going on this week. This is actually going to be a pretty busy week for all of our esports teams. So of course, we have our League of Legends match going on any minute now. But later tonight, we have our PUBG team will be competing in Collegiate PUBG. It's the, the first... Uh, match of the spring season so our team is very excited about it uh, they were one placement away from making it to the playoffs last semester so they've been working very hard to get ready for uh, this season so that will be at nine o'clock eastern time uh, we will not be able to broadcast it because it's going to be broadcasted on collegiate pubg's twitch channel so you'll need to go to twitch.tv slash collegiate pubg if you want to watch it live with the chat. However, uh, I do have our Twitch channel set up to host their channel. So whenever they go live, you can go to our channel and watch it. But I do recommend checking it out there. They're really good. It, they're they're definitely one of our uh, top teams. They performed very well uh, last semester. And we'll see how they do this semester. Uh, we're starting to get some uh, readies in the lobby. So I'll try to see if I can squeeze in some other announcements that's going on with our esports program. Uh, so Tuesday, our Fortnite team will be participating in the NACE uh, Collegiate Competition. And it's going to be a giant battle royale, kind of like the, uh, the PUBG team match will be for later this evening. I don't know if we're going to be able to broadcast it yet or not. Uh, I've done a little bit of testing uh, with OBS and the stuff of the stream. But that one we might not be able to. If we do, there might not be really any commentary for it. Just because, first of all, I don't really play Fortnite. I've played the PvE stuff. I, I'm the guy that will probably die before my parachute lands. I know that's not possible, but I'll find some way to pull that off. But So if we are able to broadcast it, uh, there probably won't be any commentary to, to go with it. Uh, Thursday, our League of Legends team will be playing against Mount Vernon Nazarene University as part of the Great Lakes Esports Conference. So we played them in Rocket League and Overwatch yesterday, and uh, we fell to them for both of those. And we're going to see if our League of Legends team can take vengeance uh, on Thursday. That'll be 8 o'clock, and that will be broadcasted. And then uh, Friday, so we got matches just about every day this week. Friday, our Rainbow Six team will be playing against Purdue University. And that will be at 8.30 Eastern Time. And we'll be broadcasting that on our Twitch channel. And then Saturday, uh, we do have matches scheduled with Ohio Northern, but we are going to be rescheduling them. Uh, Ohio Northern is going to be out of town. Uh, okay, uh, we are now going to Champ Select, so we're going to get that started up. Uh, 
So I'll continue the announcements after we get through Champion Select. Uh, so Oberlin is going to be on the blue side and Marietta will be on the red side. So now we're just going to see uh, what the bands are going to be. You don't have and it looks like Oberlin will be taking out Lucian. A very popular uh, bot lane champion. He's just always been, there really hasn't been a time where he's not strong. You see Marietta taking out the Orn. They don't want to go up against that and engage in tankiness that he has. So we'll say that's a good pick. Who dares defy my we see the Jarvan being banned, a, a, a popular uh, jungler. Lucas has played it a lot, uh, but a, a lot of junglers have played it. Mordekaiser is a very good pick for, for banning. It's like, if you're not going to take him, you got to ban him because you don't want the other team to be able to first pick it. He's just way too strong right now. So now we'll see what Oberlin's third ban will be. And they're going with the Senna. I mean, Senna's a good uh, AD carry. And we see Soraka. Okay, so that may indicate that Marietta may be going for a set top lane because Soraka is the perfect counter to set. Or we may see Oberlin go ahead and grabbing uh, set from the get go. Just gonna wait and see. They're taking their time with their picks. And they're gonna go with the pop. Oh, oh no, they're gonna go with Darius. They, they were hovering the poppy, and their top laner does play a lot of poppy. But decided to go with Darius instead. A uh, pretty strong uh, top lane pick. I've seen a lot of games this semester uh, with them. So interesting to decide to go with that as their first pick. And it looks like Crescent's gonna counter that with a Yorick. This will be interesting. York is one of those that he's pretty good. Well, it'd just be interesting to see how that lines up with the rest of Marietta's comp. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and grab the Sejuani. I mean, there are only a handful of really good junglers uh, in the current patch. Jarvan is definitely one of them. Sejuani is one. Um, Olaf is also pretty good, but you have to know how to use it. Speaking of the Olaf, and we see the Olaf being picked by uh, Oberlin. So, yeah, Olaf is one of those where if he gets fed, he can just run down a team. So, Marion has got to be very careful to not let that happen. And then we see that the mouse. So far, it's very interesting that. Everyone's been picking like their own champions because you can swap them around. Uh, both teams do have League Unlocked. But yeah, this is interesting. So will Marietta go ahead and pick their mid lane to since they know they're going up against the Malzahar? And instead they decided to go with the Leona instead. Go ahead and grab in that for Cowboy at support. At least I'm pretty sure that's a support Leona. What, 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 where else has Leona been in the in any of the lanes. Alright, so Oberlin still has to pick their bot lane. So I'm probably gonna see a lot of I was about to say we're gonna see a lot of ADC bans, but no, we see the Braum being banned, so Mary does not want to play against it. They might actually ban out Thresh too. Thresh is also a pretty uh popular bot lane champion and I know that Oberlin has their support has played that a good amount. So that instead they may not worry about banning out the ADC but actually ban out supports. Right. And we see Oberlin banning out the Caitlyn. Um, just a, a strong ADC. I can't really say it's like Larson's favorite champion. And we actually see the Nautilus, so they might be actually forcing Oberlin to play the Thresh. I think that's what they're doing. Because, I mean, what other supports are out there? I mean, there's Yumi, but Yumi isn't as strong now. His Fortune's a strong ADC, so they're really targeting Larson uh, with the ADC bands. Actually, they've been focusing a lot because four of their five bands are all ADCs. So that's interesting. So what does that leave left? Maybe like Zaya, if they want to go ahead and, and blind pick their ADC, but 
They may go ahead and go with their mid lane just to give Larson that last pick, and they are having the Orianna, and that is what they're going to play up against the Malzahar. So now we'll see what bot lane uh, Oberlin goes with. I mean, with Zaya's up, Rakan's up too, so they may go with a Zaya Rakan. I mean, that's always a, a, a very strong pick, and we do see the Zaya being hovered. So we'll have a second left. And they actually swapped to the Corky at the last second. So is this going to be a Corky Thresh bot lane? Or is it are they going to go with the Rakan? And no, they're going to go with Taric. Yeah, they do lock in the Taric. Uh, his alts and engages are very strong. So Marina's going to have to play around that whenever there's a, a team fight to making sure that they either lock down a champion before the immunity kicks in or they just take Taric out of the fight. So now Larson's going to have to decide what he wants to go, go with. I mean, he could pick the Zaya himself. He could. But no, he's got the Kaisa. Kaisa's just overall a good pick. So just taking a look at the, the loadout here. So one thing that's really interesting. So we see that Oberlin's top lane decided to go with Ghost instead of Teleport. That's an interesting choice. Usually you don't want to go with teleport so you can uh, move around the map more often, especially if there's a team fight going around like Dragon Pit, for example. So that's going to give Marietta a little bit more global presence uh, by having that extra teleport. But it looks like Darius really wants to uh, go for engages, really chase down someone. I mean, the fact that the ghost doesn't even give me the... Nah, I didn't think it was going to give me the info on there. But, all right, so we have our lineup here. Of course, uh, we are having to wait for spectator delay. So while we're waiting, I'll, still go, I'll go back to some of the announcements we were talking about. So we mentioned the PUBG match is going to be tonight at 9 o'clock. So you have to go to twitch.tv slash collegiate PUBG. And then Tuesday will be the NACE uh, match for our Fortnite team. I don't know if that's going to be broadcast or not. We'll have to see. Once again, this might be one of those where there's no commentary uh, to go with it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll try to see if we can get something up for you guys. Thursday is going to be our League of Legends match against Mount Vernon Nazarene University. That'll be at 8 o'clock. But then uh, Saturday, it's going to be our next Collegiate League of Legends match. We don't know who the opponent is yet. I mean, this is we're still kind of finishing this match first. I think brackets will go out tomorrow. So we should know. Uh, so we, we should know when the uh, the match, who will the opponent will be? Default time will be Saturday at four o'clock. And what makes this important is for the past several weeks, uh, we have been uh, teaming up with an organization called Versus Cancer, and they uh, support uh, pediatric brain tumor research. So they actually partner with. Uh, a variety of collegiate athletic teams. Whether it's football or basketball or baseball or softball or lacrosse. And uh, they try to see if they can raise funds to help with supporting that research. Uh, so we have teamed up with them. And so far we have raised over $300. So first of all, thank you so much uh, for your support. Uh, but we're gonna, for Saturday, we are dedicating our League of Legends match two versus Cancer. Uh, so we'll be talking more information about it, more statistics, but we really want to try to see if we can get a good push to, to help see if we can raise some more funds uh, for this match. Uh, the way the proceeds work is 50% will go towards the research itself, and then the other 50% will go towards a children's hospital of our choice. And we have chosen uh, that those proceeds will go to Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. So if you want to, to donate and help support us uh, with this campaign, you can go to bit.ly slash MC versus cancer. The link is the very bottom of the image that you should be seeing. The M and the C's are capitalized. And then you can uh, select donate. You can click on any of the profile pages from any of our players and try to uh, donate on the yeah, just any any donation would be much appreciated. 
because I mean, the thing with cancer is it, it doesn't play fair. It doesn't play by the rules. There is no cheat code yet uh, to beat cancer. But with your help, maybe we can help find that cheat code. I mean, no child should ever have to go through uh, any form of cancer, let alone uh, brain cancer. So if we can do something to, about it to improve children's lives, then let's see if we can do something. So with that said, for Saturday's match, uh, I do have something special planned where I will be giving a doing a donation incentive for the match. And uh, I would hope that you guys can join us on Saturday and meet that uh, same challenge or similar challenge. I'm not going to say what that challenge is just yet. I'll put it out on social media. So uh, please be sure to follow us on our Twitter page at Merida Esports, our Facebook page, so facebook.com slash Merida College Esports. And I'll get that out uh, a little bit later on. But basically, I'm going to see if the League of Legends team can make me go bankrupt for Saturday's match. They might. But uh, we'll see if we can try to get a nice drive. Anyway, uh, the lobby is already... Things are loading up, so I'm going to try to get the uh, spectator UI stuff set up here. So give me a, a second. There's that button, and that button, and that button, and that button. And all right, so we got that going. So now we need to get the uh, actual game to you. So here we go. Marietta College versus Oberlin College. Uh, once again, Oberlin is on the blue side. Marietta will be on the red side. Uh, so it looks like Marietta is going to do the standard five points. Uh, Oberlin seems to be looking out for a potential invade. But I think they know the invade is not happening. They ping out Sejuani. But it's looking like at least that Oberlin will be starting on their blue side. Minions have spawned. Actually, no, never mind. I wait. I did. I did say the blue side. I, I was thinking the red side, but it looks like he's going to go to the blue side instead. And meanwhile, Marietta will also start on their uh, blue side. So I think the big matchup will be, well, there, there, there's several factors with this. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of can Larson uh, stay ahead in his lane because uh, a lot of the compositions have revolved around Larson getting ahead and you taking advantage of that lead. But for me personally, I think the interesting matchup is going to be between Darius and Yorick. Just the, uh, the Yorick should be good into Darius, but Darius can get very strong with his bleeds and his slam dunks. But also the fact that Crespin does have the teleport versus uh, Darius's uh, ghost. So I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in that matchup. And actually, any of the matchups will be uh, interesting. All right, so it's not two and a half minutes. Again. We already see an engage going on a little bit. It's on to. Oberlin and Tarek had to flash to get away. It was less than a quarter of health. And the, the game is freezing up a little bit. Not sure what's going on. Hopefully we get back in here real soon. Okay, there we go. I, I'm not too sure what happened there. I apologize, but um, we're back. We're good. It's all good. We're fine. We're all fine. Fine. Yes, we're fine. How are you? We even see Malzahar starting to take some damage in the, the mid lane. So we're seeing uh, both Brimstone and Larson starting to push pretty hard. Although we may see the... Uh, okay, so we see Olaf actually is going to come around from behind. And Merida is not going to have the vision for this. And Larson's going to have to flash away. And this is going to be first blood for for Oberlin, and Darius is getting a, got a solo kill onto Yorick while, and actually getting a double kill. So, in just a span of 10 seconds, Oberlin has gotten three kills. I mean, that's just lack of vision in the, the bot lane. I mean, we, and yeah, giving Darius two kills is not the way you want to start. So now we see Olaf going straight for Brimstone. 
And once again, he doesn't have uh, any vision. So Marina getting punished very early on. So they're going to have to hold back a little bit to watch their vision, watch their lanes, make sure they don't get ganked by Olaf. Although Olaf didn't get, he only got the assist, so he did not get the kill, but still, you're getting a very powerful Corky and a powerful Darius. And we're seeing Malzahar burning his teleport to get back into lane. Pretty common at this point in the, the game itself. Seeing that things getting locked up a little bit again, I'm gonna try some things here to uh, see if we can help with that. I'm going to take that out. And Crespin had to burn his flash right there when uh, the Ares burned his ghost. Some pinks coming out, but uh, I think that's just because they weren't. Uh, Overlord wasn't sure where Marietta's bot lane was. And Infernal Drake is up, and we may see Olaf uh, going for it. Yeah, he's going to be soloing this. And Sejuani will come down, at least spot it out. So, a good observation there to prevent him from uh, taking it single handedly. We do see another gauge going on to uh, Corky, but Leona's going to take some damage. So we're now about six minutes in the game, and Oberlin is up by about 1.5k gold. So I'm not so sure why the spectator is kind of freezing like that. Right now, part of that goalie is not just the uh, the kills that Overland's got, but we're seeing a really big gold difference in the top lane. Darius is just able to clear waves much better than York. So so far, it's looking like the uh, the favor is going the match is going into Darius's favor. See that also Crestman doesn't have any vision in the top lane, so that could make him vulnerable to ganks and the fact that he's pushed up. lot else is going on right now we do see Olaf kind of heading towards the bot river the ward he's gonna get uh, spot out with the ward and clear it and we may see a possible gank up in the bot lane by Nox He is level six, so his ult is right. We see the flash going in by Leona, and the, the flash and the uh, ult does go out. Another flash does go out by Corky, but he is going to get slowed. A knight goes out, and he does go down. And it looks like Terra could probably go down, but Olaf is coming by. But a double kill by Kaiza. So a great uh, gank attempt there by uh, Cowboy and Lox to set up the kills for Larson. So that's going to get Marietta back in the game. They're only down by 800 gold. And we're seeing the gauge go on the top lane. The slam dunk goes in and does finish off Cressman. 
But meanwhile, Marina is going to be able to go for the dragon. So they will at least get Infernal Drake. You see some things going on in the top lane. So Olaf might be saying, okay, you took Infernal Drake. I'm going to take Rift Herald. In fact, we do see him going for that. And the pings are coming out. I'm not so sure if Marion is going to be able to contest this. Brimstone is dangerously low on health. So I think they are going to have to concede the Rift Herald. And with that, uh, Olaf will take the Rift Herald for Oberlin. So with that, Oberlin is now ahead just shy of 2,000 gold. So Merida got some kills, but uh, Oberlin is still staying ahead in the game. Gorky uses the package. Oh, interesting. Actually, that's his E. Never mind, that's not the package. Now, the big thing we see here is the disparity in the vision. If we look at the, the bot side, we have three different control wards for Oberlin. And I think there's maybe one ward for Marietta. So they're going to be very careful. If they don't reestablish the vision, then they're going to be prone to ganks by Olaf. Because we see that Olaf does play quite aggressively. In fact, we do see Olaf going in for the gank attempt, and Marion is not going to see this. I mean, Nox is there. So now he's going to have to get away. The stun and the immunity does come out. Uh, Larson does flash away, but still gets very low. And Nox comes in with the counter gank, and Larson gets the kill onto Olaf. This is exactly what Marion needs. So Nox will get a kill. Meanwhile, we do see a, a roam by Brimstone. A great ult there. Although, we do see he's going to try to get this slam dunk, but that does get shut down by uh, Brimstone. So, a great job there to uh, take out Darius. And with that, that puts Mary to back in this game and actually ahead by about three to 400 gold. And we even see the dive attempt onto Corky. Yeah, he should not have stayed there. The three people there, you're going to die. So that's going to actually allow Mary to take some turret plates, or at least... Yeah, they got two turret plates out of that. And Cressman's going to try to get some turret plates in the top lane as well. He does get one. But Mary just got to be careful a little bit. Uh, Olaf is sticking around, so th they know the back out because the uh, control ward does spot him. So now 12 minutes in the game, and... Uh, with that, Marietta is ahead by about 24, 23, 2400 gold, I'd say. Ocean Drake's not going to be up again for another minute 17. So I think Marietta will start getting vision set up. At least they're aware of where some of the controls. Now, Crestman just burned his uh, teleport to get back into lane. So if there is a fight in the Dragon Pit, Crestman's not going to be able to get down there unless he roams. And with the way Darius has been pushing in this lane, I don't see uh, Crestman being able to, to do that. So Merida's going to have to get some vision established. So we do see uh, Cowboy there trying to get it cleared up a little bit. But with Ocean Drake in 45 seconds, I would expect a team fight there pretty soon. And we do see Corky bringing out the rockets. And got Cressman down to about... Lost about a quarter of his health. And we see the Rift Herald being summoned in the mid lane. So that's going to allow Oberlin to get some pressure. Interesting to put it there. 
I mean, they might be able to actually take it out before I can get a charge onto the tower. Yeah, they're actually going to get down before he can get any charges on the tower. So, uh, Oberlin didn't get much out of it. So, Ocean Drake is up and Marina is starting to converge down there. All teleports are down and Vision's trying to... Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to gain control of Vision. Marina knows that Darius is just still trying to get that first tower and he's going to be working on it. Tur turret plane has fallen and Oberlin will claim the first turret. Meanwhile, Marina will start up the Ocean Drake. It's already about half health, but Oberlin may be looking to try to steal this away. And they are Marina is able to secure the dragon, so Corky was trying to use his rockets to see if he could snipe it. And that will have Marietta fall back, so Marietta is up two dragons. But now it's a matter of can they get uh, some turrets. And Cressman actually burns his ult there to get Darius uh, less than half health. And Brimstone pops the Orianna ult. And double flashes are used, but Brimstone was able to get the kill onto Malzahar. So now we see Olaf coming around again, maybe looking to try to uh, get a gank in. The axe comes out, but it does not connect, and neither does the stun by Tarek. Now Corky's taking a lot of damage from Kaiza. We see the Leona coming out, but it does not connect. And Tarek will pop his immunity. Interesting use of alts. I mean, it didn't seem like any of them were that effective. Meanwhile, we do see some action going on in the, uh, the Rift Herald, and Marietta will secure it. So, great roam there uh, by everyone to, to take that while we're watching all. Kind of all sorts of traits going on here in the, the bot lane. Well, Larson's got to be careful. He, he tried to take some, put some damage onto the bot lane. He took a tower hit, so he's going to have to back away a little bit. And those uh, rockets are, are, are they're starting to do some poke damage onto Larson, but Corky is low on mana. So we do see the engage, and Tarek has to flash away. Actually, Larson still has his heal, so he could always burn that if he needs to. So we're about 16 half minutes into the game. Actually, Rift Trail gets uh, summoned into the bot lane. And they do take that bot tower. So now we'll see if Marius starts to roam around a little bit. Right, the ult actually comes in onto Corky, and he will go down. And the Rift Herald does get a second charge onto that tower, and it looks like Marietta will try to take it, but I mean, we do see Olaf and Karrig going back to Contestant, and they will defend uh, that tower, but it is very low on health. So now we do see Marietta just kind of hovering around in their blue jungle. And we do see a couple hovering around uh, Marietta's mid tower, so that might be what uh, Oberlin goes for next. At least Malzahar and Tarek are there, but uh, Nox is there to try to contest. Gets the stun, but a great shield there by Brimstone. Yeah, not a whole lot going on right now. We were 18 minutes in the game, and Marina is up by just a little under 2,000 gold. So we haven't really seen one side or the other snowball the gold lead. I think it's going to come down to like a big team fight that will really 
uh, make a difference. We do see... Like some vi Once again, just trying to get vision established, trying to clear it. So we might see some contention going on here in the mid lane. And the pings are coming out. We see Yor coming in. We may be looking at a possible uh, engage. Mountain Drake's going to be up in 25 seconds, though, and Marietta starts to head towards there to get things set up. So I think we're due for a team fight any second now. We even see Corky getting poked out just a, a little bit. And meanwhile, Olaf is going to try to do some damage to the uh, the bot tower, but Nox will be there to defend. And Oberlin start. Well, I thought they were going to start heading towards the dragon, but they're not quite doing it just yet. But Marietta starts to fall in. Mountain Drake is up. And we see four front uh, Oberliners there, but Darius is not too far behind. Maybe looking for. Oh, just clearing some more minions. Maybe seeing a possible flank by Marietta. At least trying to see if they can catch a slow or something, but they're kind of zoning out Overland and maybe starting up the Mountain Drake. But they do start it up. It's already less than half health. So this could be a 50-50 smite. Marietta does take the Mountain Drake and will fall away. Or back out, I guess. Fall back, back away. You know what I meant. But meanwhile, the rest of uh, Oberlin will be contesting the, uh, or they just try to get the mid tower, but Merida falls in there to defend it. And even able to block it before the crystals go off. So we see Darius just kind of heading back up towards the top lane. So despite the fact that Darius is up by over 50 CS compared to Crestman, we haven't seen him really make a, a huge difference in the game just yet, but he is 3-1-0, so we, we'll see how that plays a role later on. He does have his training force up, but so does Crestman. So I think a lot of this is still going to come down to that lane. In fact, if we take a look at the, uh, the gold amounts, we'll see that Darius has almost 9,000 gold, which is more than any other player uh, in this game, including uh, anyone from Marietta's side. So that's going to become a very scary Darius uh, that Marietta will have to respect if they're going to be able to finish out this game. We see Larson getting onto Tarek, at least poking him out a little bit. You see Kaiser trying to get on the Malzahar. It's already less than half health and has to flash away. But Kaiser will burn her all and actually gets the kill onto Malzahar. Meanwhile, Tarek is going to try to run, but Nox is going to try to get the slow onto him. But uh, counters with the stun, so he will get away. So meanwhile, Marietta is trying to contest the uh, the mid tower. And they're getting some good damage and should be able to take it down. So Marietta is up two towers to one. And most of Marietta is in the mid lane. So they're going to continue this push. Meanwhile, Darius will, will split push in the top lane, but he's just kind of up in no man's land and can't really do anything except just push. Oh, we see Brimstone getting a nice ult onto Corky and getting him down. Meanwhile, we see Crestman getting onto Darius. And actually pops his ult. Uh... And we see the rest of Marietta actually chasing after him, but they will let him go. He's just a little too far away to catch him. And Darius was going to go back out, but he sees the kitty cats. Apparently Darius is the dog person because he's going to kill those cats. Now he's going to back out. So not a whole lot going on here. I mean, I mean Marietta is they're still up by just shy of just around 3,000 gold. And they're up in kills. But it's a matter of can they take this lead and expand on it? And they haven't quite done that yet. They are stalling a, a bit. 
But I mean, there's still the top outer tower that they should try to get down, or they can work on the mid inner tower. I mean, uh, Marionette was able to secure the uh, the two bottom towers, and we actually see an all onto Larson, and uh, Malzahar pops the uh, the ult and does, but he does get away. And Corky actually gets very low, so we see the uh, immunity ult coming out by Tarek. So they try to catch Larson off uh, off guard, but he was able to heal and flash away, but still very low in health. No other ults burned by Miriam. Actually, I apologize. I thought Crescent burned his ult earlier, but he did not. So he still has his ult available uh, if he wants to use it. And we may see a catch onto Darius, and this is exactly what Marietta wants. And Darius will flash away. We see a lot of Overland grouped up, and they will take out... Actually, no, yeah, Crestman did burn his ult to use the uh, the minion, and Olaf does get him down. Uh, Mountain Drake is up in 30 seconds, and it is heavily warded in Marietta's favor. So we may see another uh, Mountain Drake fight. Uh, well, actually, there wasn't even a, a fight to the dragon just yet, but Marietta's going to go straight for it. And once again, they're going to try to zone out uh, Overland. They're actually going to catch Olaf a little bit, and he's going to have to back away. They Tarek tries to get the sun onto Nox, but he was able to use his E to just kind of jump out of there. Things are going out, they know exactly where Oberlin is. And meanwhile, Marietta will start up on this Drake. But Oberlin does believe they have to take this Drake. Marietta is already up by three. And Olaf is already poked down less than half health. Meanwhile, Quirky's gonna try to use something. And Olaf goes in, but does not get the dragon. And he pops his ult, but he will go down by Larson. So that is a Drake and a kill in Marietta's favor. Still a little scary, at least for me, but they got it. It works. So about 25 half minutes into yeah, So right now Marietta has an Infernal Drake, an Ocean buff, and two Mountain buffs. So they should be able to get some objectives uh, at this point, because we're almost at 26 minutes into the game. So they start looking at Baron, they start looking at clearing more towers. So we'll see if they can continue this push. And Kaisa is getting really scary. I mean, uh, 222 CS and 602. So he's going to be a beast. So as long as he stays alive in team fights, Marion is going to be in good shape. We see some pinks coming out. Is Marianne starting up the Baron? Marianne is actually starting up the Baron. And I don't know if it's because they know that Olaf is nowhere to be found and Darius is in the bot lane, but... Or it's just the fact that uh, Oberlin doesn't have a lot of vision, but Marietta will secure the Baron. And they may be trying to chase down Olaf, or at least meet back into the mid lane. We do see some pings. Darius is going to continue his split push. But Marietta is now uh, ahead by almost 5,000 gold. Almost! And we see Marietta is just sieging that mid lane. Darius is coming from behind and he does get pinged out. He's looking for a possible flank so they will back away. So Darius does get the hook in, so we're it looks like we're gonna get into a fight! The immunity down comes out and uh and there's already one down for Marietta. Slam dunk comes in for Darius, and another slam dunk gets a shutdown onto Marietta, and they have to back away. It's a 3 for 0 in favor of Oberlin. And we see Cressman trying to go in, but the fight is already lost. There's no reason to try to go in there and fight. I mean, most of Oberlin is low, but a lot of the damage is gone. And they're going to go straight onto Brimstone, pop the Zanyas, but the uh, tower is down. And Marion has overstayed their welcome and they turn into an ace. And this is exactly what Oberlin needed to get back into this game. In fact, now they're ahead in gold and they're probably going to be able to take the inhibitor.
We do see the engage onto Marietta. Olaf is getting very low, but he does not fall. Now he falls. And there's two down for Oberlin. The Leona ult comes out, so they're going to try to get Darius finished off. And the silence goes off with a shutdown by Larson. And they will continue to chase uh, the rest of Oberlin. So my goodness, a lot happened there. And there's a double flash there by Nox and Corky, but they're going to try to slow him down. And they're going to get the freeze on him and finish him off. Looks like they are going to try to get this tower down and see if they can trade inhibitors. Darius and Corky are still down for another 13 seconds. At least Darius for another 13 seconds. So Maria like, gets to get some damage on the tower, but they're going to have to back away because Olaf is going to come in. And we do see Larson at least clearing out minion waves. But this goes to show the fact that even though Marietta has most of the objectives, uh, Oberlin can still get team fights because their Darius is so far ahead. So they have to keep that Darius in check. As long as Darius is up, he is the primary threat. See, Elder Drake's going to be up in about 55 seconds, so that might be the next place, uh, next objective that area to aims for. We're already 30 minutes into the game, and we're looking at about three and a half k gold difference. So this is still a very close game. One big team fight could make or break the uh, the game. Pink's coming out, uh, and Oberlin's trying to actually gain control of the dragon this time. They want that Elder Drake. They don't have a single Drake buff, and we already see all of Oberlin there, and Marietta may start collapsing onto them very soon. In fact, you see Darius trying to catch someone out, and Nox will go in a little bit, but back away. So we're seeing a lot of poke damage going out uh, by Oberlin. So we're going to see an engage very soon. So it's just a matter of can everyone be on the same page with the engage. We see the stun coming out onto Nox, but there is no fault. The Leona stone comes in and everyone's going to be jumping in. The immunity shields come out for Oberlin, but they are going to peel off Olaf and get him down. The Brimstone ults comes in by Oriana and Derek goes down. So that's two down for Oberlin. And Malzahar goes down. So that's three down, four down. All that's left is Darius. He did get the kill onto... He's getting two kills down, and his slam dunk is still available, but Cressman is able to get the kill, so that is a 5-4-2 uh, in Marietta's favor, so they will go for Elder Drake. Take a little bit of time, but to be fair, they're... The primary DPS Larson is down, but even Oriana 514 with 232 CS is pretty good. But Marietta will secure the uh, the Elder Drake, so they're going to back away. Pings are coming out for Baron, so that might be the next uh, objective. It is up. But meanwhile, there's super minions going into the base, and Marietta has to answer that. The Nexus Towers are already a little bit low on health. So Mary's gonna have to be very careful because even though they are ahead by over 6,000 gold, they're still super minions. Actually, no, that's stopped now. Never mind. But it's still, the Nexus Towers are exposed. So if they lose a team fight, then uh, Oberlin could try to run through mid and take the, uh, the Nexus. Although we're at a point where death, death timers are so large that 
uh, taking the taking the Baron might be enough to for either side to w finish off the game. Now it just seems like everyone's waiting for a possible engage. Everyone's up, all ults are up. And will Marietta start the Baron? At least they'll clear vision, but they're gonna start up the Baron. And meanwhile, Overlich is gonna go straight through the, uh, they're just gonna go straight for the Nexus Towers. So they're going to get the inhibitor. So it's a Baron for an inhibitor. Interesting trade there. So Meridia is going to try to chase everyone down. Immunity comes out. But Larson's able to get a kill on Tarek. And another and Malzahar goes down. So that's two down for Oberlin. So Marina, it looks like they are going to be going for the, uh, just run, I'm going to be careful on my face. I don't want to say it sounds like they're running down mid, but they did get the inhibitor tower and the inhibitor, so they're going to be contesting the Nexus at this point. We do see one Nexus tower getting low. The first one does go down. Meanwhile, Kai's is trying to get onto Corky and at least we'll poke him away because he's already very low in health. Meanwhile, Darius is very low in health. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's Olaf, not Darius. That's Darius. And he's going to try to get away. This is, avoids Leonis now, but gets trapped by Cressman. And he ends up going down. The Nexus Tower goes down. And all that's left is the Nexus. And Marianna will take game one. But yeah, well done there by Marianna. Whew. That was a lot of action there at the very end. I mean, that was a 50, uh, 35 minutes uh, game. So it took a... Uh, a little while to do it, but they did get it. All right, uh, so now we're gonna try to get game two here set up. So I'm gonna join the lobby real quick. So let's see here. I think I got the code. So I just need to add it. So let's see here, play, tournament code, spectate. All right, so, okay. So we're in the lobby, uh, just getting everyone added back for game two. But yeah, I mean, a lot of it just came down to, like, Darius was the big threat, but he wasn't utilized as much. And uh, they were able to uh, kind of keep him out of the fight. And there was that one team fight where he was pretty effective at getting a couple of kills with his slam dunk. But yeah, I mean, Marina was able to outscale with the Kaiza and really good ults there by uh, Brimstone and his Oriana as well. That made some huge plays. Uh, so while we're getting the lobby set up, it looks like uh, Marietta will be on the blue side. I think we're just trying to get everyone uh, back in to get things ready for game two. Yeah, we're just waiting. Yeah, we're just waiting for a little bit to get everyone in the lobby. So it, it just may take a little while. I um, don't know if I should just go to a break. Yeah, we'll go. We're going to take a small break. Um, just while we're going to get things set up. We may just be back in like a minute or so. So don't go too far away. But if you want to like, get a quick drink or something, we should be back in just a, a minute or so.
All right, uh, welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the uh, the score. Uh, the lobby is getting formed up. Um, there were a couple, at least one player that went to the stepped away for just a second. They're back, so we should probably be getting game two going any uh, minute now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think I said earlier, Marietta is going to be on the blue side this time, and Oberlin will be on the red side. Uh, we do see all of Marietta in the lobby, and I think it looks like everyone. Um, yeah, everyone over on the side is pretty much in, so we should be getting the champ select uh, any second now. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what kind of adjustments uh, both sides will make. Like, Mary and May decide that since Darius was the biggest threat, that they may uh, take him out. They say they want to uh, play, play against that. Uh, we may see, I would expect to see... Um, Oberlin like banning Kaiza as an example because just of how uh, strong Larson got with Kaiza, so we can expect to see that. Uh, we may see the Olaf ban by Marietta, but okay, uh, Marietta's ready. Uh, okay, so I think I think Oberlin had a couple of players who stepped away. Um, I'm not gonna go AFK here. We're not gonna take a break. Okay, yeah, I was about to say they're starting to, to join the the lobby again. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as everyone is actually like a couple of people are in the spectators should be joined the lobby. So again, the lobby so we can get the game going. I think we're just waiting for one more of Oberlin's to maybe he stepped away for a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 wait. Oh, they're, they're just getting LCS orders. Like, say, where did everybody go? The lobby was disappearing on me. I know you guys can't see this. I'm just kind of waiting for everything here to get set up, and then we'll get the champ select once they get started. Okay, there we go. At least now they're in the, the right order. So we should be getting the champ select soon. Both sides are ready. So we're just waiting. And here we go, champ select for game two, Marietta College versus Oakland College. So let's see what adjustments we see. Marietta is still gonna ban out the Orn. They don't like Orn, so Orn, out of here. Now, let's see what adjustments Oberlin makes. So things like that, they don't maybe they want to play against the uh, Kaiza. I would not be surprised if they ban out the Kaiza after how, Lar how well Larson played that in the last game. They are taking their time with their ban selection. They're still going to ban out the Lucian. They don't want to play against that. Now we'll see if Marietta decides to say like, they, they still ban out the Mordecai. So they could have first picked it, but they don't want to play against it. So they might keep the same bands. Maybe they didn't see Darius as much of a threat in game one. Fine. I don't need more and enemies. we still see the Senna ban by Oberlin. So will Marietta keep the same bands as before? Yes! So they're still going to ban out Soraka. And this may actually open them to first picking set because Soraka is banned. So now, will, will Oberlin keep... I can't remember what their third ban was. I think it was Jarvan, if I remember right. Will they keep the Jarvan ban? Or will they let Marietta have a chance of taking Kaiza? And they decided to ban Misfortune instead. So Jarvan's up if Marietta wants to first pick it. And instead, they're ho hovering the mouse... No, I don't... Did, did they do that? Would they probably pick their mid lane? I'd be very surprised if they, and they did, I am very surprised. Like, they really want that Malzahar. Now, to be fair, I could be wrong with this, but my understanding is there aren't too many counter picks for Malzahar. So that might be a, a safe blind pick for the, uh, the mid lane. And it looks like we're going to see a Fiora in the top lane, along with an Ari to go up against Malzahar. This is interesting. So now we'll see what Mary decides to go with next. If they're going to try to counter the uh, Fiora. I know if, like, if I were doing this, I would try to go ahead and pick the counter for Fiora and uh, pick the jungler. That way you're not giving away too much. And they are going to pick the Sejuani. Larson, I mean, not Larson, but uh, Nox had a really good game with the Sejuani. So, I'm going to keep that. 
So now we'll see... Do they pick the counter for the top lane, or do they try to... Oh, yeah, they're gonna go with Set. Crestman loves Set, so he feels like he can play that into Fiora. I mean, Set's just really powerful right now, even with the, uh, the nerfs that he had. Now we'll see what... Oh, sorry. And we're gonna see a Warwick jungle. Warwick is a viable jungler. I've, I've seen some like champion, like grandmaster level players play Warwick just fine. And there's the Kaiza ban. So so far, four of Oberlin's five bans are ADCs again. They do not want Larson to be comfortable. Temerita will ban the Nautilus again. They don't want to play against that. So now, will this fifth ban be Jarvan or will it be another ADC? We're just waiting so patiently. What will be that ban? Right. And it's a Caitlyn. So all they are completely focusing on Larson. They see him as the threat. And Mary decide they don't want the Taric. It's like, no, you don't get to play Taric again. I would expect actually Openland to pick their ADC. Yeah, they're gonna pick the Zaya. So that's six ADCs that's not in Lars that Larson can't pick from. So what is he going to play into Zaya? So what could he do? He, I mean, he's got like, he could do like Jinx. I don't think he would do the Quirky. What else is available? Ezreal maybe? I don't think I've seen him play a lot of Ezreal. I think they're going to pick their support next just to, uh, oh, he's going to go with the Ash. Ash. Okay. Ash is good. We're going to get an Ash. All right. So then, oh no, no, I was about to say, Cowboy, if you were gonna pick Blitzcrank, if he picked Blitzcrank, I probably would not be held responsible for what I would do to him. But he goes with the Braum, very good pick, uh, nice shields. Uh, so here we could see the Thresh, we could see the Rakan, we could see the Morgana, and we do see the Thresh. Uh, their support does play a lot of Thresh. Although, Braum should do well against that. But okay, we have our composition here for game two. We're just waiting for loadouts. So, a uh, few things worth noting, at least some observations with the loadouts. So, on Oberlin's side, uh, Fiora has the teleport. So, now we're going to see that global presence from the top laner. But Ari is doing with Ignite Flash instead of Teleport Flash. So they still are going to have a little limited global presence, but it's not as big of an issue as game one. Just because Dalfior can get into the team fights if there's anything in Dragon or Mid or Bot or so forth. But uh, yeah, this I think as far as matchups go in this case, you can make an argument for all of them. I mean, Ari gets picked into Malzahar, Set gets picked into Fiora, Ash gets picked into Zaya. Oh man, I think the lane we have to watch out for again is, is going to be this time the bot lane. I think that's the the big thing because Oberlin recognizes Larson as a threat. He is the highest ranked player on the team, and that's why they uh, focused all their bans on him. So. Larson's going to have to, it's going to be up to Larson to just get ahead uh, to be able to carry this game. Now, that's not to say that Mary, the rest of Marietta can't do anything. I mean, Set's a very powerful champion. Malzahar is really good. But I think it's going to come down to uh, Larson's gameplay. So while we are waiting for spectator delay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in case uh, you weren't uh, here earlier, so... First of all, you're watching Married Ecology Sports Bank. Thank you for spending your evening with us. Uh, so we have quite a few matches this, this week. Uh, later tonight, our PUBG team will be uh, competing in Collegiate PUBG. Uh, so that'll be 9 o'clock Eastern time. But you have to go to twitch.tv slash Collegiate PUBG to watch it. Uh, we will be hosting it uh, on our channel here. So you could come back to our channel and check it out. Uh, Tuesday, our Fortnite team will be playing in the, the, the NACE uh fortnite competition 
Once again, I may or may not be able to uh, broadcast that. We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's just a matter of if I can get things set up properly. But even if I do get it set up, there won't be any audio for the game itself. So there probably won't be any uh, comms or, or any commentary during it if I am able to broadcast it. But I will try. For you guys, I will try to get that up. Uh, Thursday, our League of Legends team will be playing against uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene University as part of the Great Lakes Esports Conference. And then Saturday, we will have our next Sea Law match at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. We don't know the opponent yet, but that is going to be part of our uh, Versus Cancer uh, fundraiser drive. So we have teamed up with Versus Cancer to see if we can raise funds for pediatric brain tumor research. Uh, so if you're able to help with that, please go to bit.ly slash MC versus cancer. Any amount can help, uh, help. Whether you can donate $10, even if you can only do donate $1, every dollar matters. Half the proceeds will go towards the research itself. The other half the proceeds will go towards a children's hospital of our choice. And we have chosen the uh, children, Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. Doesn't mean we want to do our part to see if we can help with fighting against cancer. Uh, cancer doesn't play by the rules. Uh, it is cruel. No one should ever have to go through it, especially a child. So if we can do something about it, if we can improve the life of even one child with this support, then it would be all worth it. So if you're able to help, please uh, help us out with it. We will be making a big push for Saturday's match. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be issuing a challenge uh, during that game. So... Uh, if you want to know what that challenge is, you will have to follow us on social media. So please be sure to follow us on Twitter at Marietta Esports. Uh, Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash Marietta College Esports. You can also follow us on uh, our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash Marietta College Esports. All of our matches get uploaded there. And then, of course, you can follow us here on Twitch. So whenever we do go live, you are aware of it. And then while we're getting things set up, if you really want to help support our program... Uh, you can always subscribe to our Twitch channel, which would give you access to our uh, emotes and VODs. So all that we appreciate it. And yes, I know you hear everyone loading up. I am getting the game underway. So here we go. Game two of Marietta College versus Oberlin College. Marietta has taken game one. Marietta is on the blue side and Oberlin will be on the red side. So we'll see what Marietta decides to do. Are they looking at a possible invade? They are grouped up. They may be trying to go for an invade, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So this is going to be interesting. And are they going to catch the Ari? Ari sees this and has to flash. And it's getting poked down pretty hard. They don't get the kill, but they are going to kind of take a little lap around the jungle. And get some vision. They are trying to see if they can catch someone, but it is warded. It is definitely warded. Oberlin sees this. In fact, Warwick is already on the red side. Is Mary just going to stay there? Like, they're going to be wasting time. Like, or are they just going to take the blue buff? Okay, yeah, they're just going to steal the blue buff. Yeah, so like... Interesting choice there to take uh, the blue buff, but that might give Oberlin a chance to take uh, Marietta's blue buff. But they do have uh, the... Uh, good move by Marietta by, by having the blue buff warded, so they will know if Warwick decides to go down there. And he is going to head down there. And we already see Set getting some damage onto Fiora up there. I think what's going to be really interesting is Ari, Ari, Ari already, tried saying that three times fast, burned her flash. So the question would be, do we see any possible gank attempts uh, in the mid lane? And we're already seeing Yona getting pretty low, but Cressman is starting to take some damage too. He's going to get very low. 
and actually gets the first blood. So Fiona will try to go in, but Crispin flashes away and says, nope, you're going to take another turret shot, and he gets first blood. So in three minutes, Marion is already up by a little bit, and that's just because of the first blood gold. We do see Fiora trying to put some pressure onto Crescent. Yeah, we just see a lot of training going on here. Crescent's trying to Get some damage, but he's getting very low, so Fiora might be able to finish him off. He does not have his flash this time. He does get the shield up, but Fiora is going to finish him off. So that just kind of evens up Crestman's advantage. See, meanwhile, the other lanes are pretty even. In terms of CS, so right now the gold difference is only by about a hundred gold. Yeah, not much else going on right now. I mean, junglers are still kind of farming. We see Nox is slightly ahead of Warwick, but I think he's just ahead by a camp. Yeah, not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, we do see some vision going on here. We do. Barry has got some vision in the bot lane this time, so if Warwick does try to get a gain contempt, like right now, they are going to spot him by the uh, uh, where the Skull Crab was. And Infernal Drake is up as the first dragon, so this will be interesting in a little bit. And now we're seeing some more training going on in the top lane. Just a lot of fighting going on between Set and Fiora. See some pinks coming out. I mean, Warwick was trying to get something, but Nox is going to at least catch it out, and they may try to trap him. And we see even Brimstone starting to. Yeah, they're trying to chase down Warwick, but he will kind of he will get away. But Ari's not too far behind, and it looks like Nox. Well, he's just clearing vision. I don't think he'll start the Infernal Drake. Man, it looks like Warwick may be looking to try to make a play here. He was backing away, but he decided to hold off, so... But since Marina did get the Scuttle Crab... Actually, we see the gank attempt going here onto Zaya, and she'll go down. Cowboy takes the kill. I'm sure Larson's happy with that. Let's go. We see a little bit of training in the top lane. And Marina was able to secure the dragon. I guess I wasn't paying attention to that. My bad. I'm watching this fight going on here between Crestman and Fishman Zoro. But Marina does secure the Infernal Drake, so that's going to be a nice boost to their damage. And Crestman's actually getting pretty low. He's going to drag her out and gets very low. He does, his flash is almost up. He may try to use the flash to finish her off. She's just one auto away. Oh, that's so close. You hate to see that. 
And Flash just came up. Although here comes Ari. He might have to use his flash to get away from Ari. The charm comes out and he's gonna get the shield and he flashes away. And here comes Nox. They all comes in, does not connect. And Ari actually goes down from the turret shot. So great job there by Nox to be in that position to at least, I guess Ari kind of got baited down and took too many turret hits and now it's another kill for Marietta. And while it's on my mind, I'm going to double check Set's ult. Because I keep calling a power driver, even though I know that's not what it's called. So I want to at least give it the correct... Okay, where... Uh, meanwhile, we just see more fire. Maybe uh, uh, we see it all going out onto Zaya, and actually uses her all to be untargetable. Meanwhile, we do see an engage also onto uh, Brimstone. He's going to try to get away. Uh, may have to burn his flash. But Nox is nearby, so we should he should be fine there. Ah, showstopper. I gotta remember that. And we do see another skirmish going on. Lots of skirmish going on here. And we're seeing Warwick getting chased out. Had to burn his flash to get away. And another flash goes in. He's gonna get uh, alted by Brimstone. But Larson will get the kill. And now we're seeing Thresh getting pinged. So they may try to chase him down. So at about 10 minutes into the game, uh, Marietta is up by just a little over 2,000 gold, about 2,200 and up by 4 kills. And we're even seeing CS advantages for Crestman and Brimstone. Uh, not Crestman, I'm sorry, Larson. I am botching up names today. Crestman is down a little bit uh, in CS, but he does have at least a, an assist. We see the charms going on to Malzahar, and it's going to get the silence on her, at least poke her down. Meanwhile, Warwick is going to go straight over, and it looks like you're going to get a flank. Pinks come out by, a, I don't know if it was Brimstone or Nox, but he does get caught out, so uh, Brimstone does back away. You see another gauge going on here in the top lane. And that's there's the showstopper. Got the name right. And Crestman does get the solo kill onto Fiora. I have to remember it's called Showstopper. And we see the Ash Arrow trying to come out to catch uh catch Ari, but it's just off by a little bit to the right. You gotta try. I've seen some amazing Ash Alts from downtown. I remember seeing one like like an Ash Arrow fires just randomly from the bot lane to the mid lane and actually gets the kill on the mid laner while they're backing. It was hilarious. I think I still have that record on my computer. But anyway, we're 11 and a half minutes into the game. Marietta is up by a considerable amount. Fiora's going to try to get the jump onto Crespo. Here comes Nox and here comes Warwick. So the Warwick ult will come out, but Fiora does go down and Warwick gets stunned. This should be another kill. So both Nox and Crestman get a kill. Although they're not going to start up the Rift Herald, they did. Uh, Nox did get a little low in health. So right now, Marion is up seven kills. So can they capitalize on the gold lead? We do see uh, Nox starting up the Rift Herald. So I guess his he got the the plant, so it got him a little bit more health. Crestman's going to start heading down to help. So they should be able to secure the Rift Herald. We do see more pings coming out, this time from Oberlin, and they are spawning out the Ash and Braum kind of heading towards the river. Maybe looking for a flank or an engage. 
And Rift Herald is secured by Marietta. And we see the hook getting onto Braum and Alter coming back out and Flash is going to come out. Braum's going to have to use his ult to counter engage. And Larson goes straight onto uh, Zaya, but Thresh is going to get punished. And here comes Warwick. And Larson flashes away from it and gets the double kill. Now Warwick is going to try to get something onto Larson and actually get the stun off from the uh, the stacks that... Uh, okay, so a lot went on there. So let me explain what happened there, at least that very last part. Calvin was low, but he gets a punch in for his stacks to get up. So then Larson was able to get some hits and actually get the stun on him. And there's the showstopper again onto Fiora. And Scrasma gets uh, flashes to continue engaging onto her. And looks like he's going to get her down. So there you have four kills in a very short amount of time. And meanwhile, Marietta will secure the Cloud Drake. So my god. Goodness, so much is going on all over the place. Marion has done a very good job of just keeping Warwick out of this game. He's 0-3. He's going to try to get something onto Cressman. Uh, nothing does quite connect, so he will reset. But, but yeah, Warwick has not been very effective. He's at 0-3-0 and 20 CS behind uh, Nox. And Nox even has two kills ahead, so if we look at the gold difference between them, I mean, it's an over uh, 1,200, almost a 1,200 gold difference between uh, the junglers. So the question is, can Marietta expand on this lead? So we're about a little over 14 half minutes into the game. And it's just a matter of what objectives will uh, Mary to go for next. We see pressure being put onto the mid tower uh, by Brimstone. He'll back away. And Warwick may be looking for a possible flank. And his flash is still up and he will flash away, but it looks like the Ignite Ticks will finish him off. So that does give Warwick a kill. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, Rift Herald was summoned in the bot lane and they were able to secure first tower and they may continue the push uh, for the outer or the inner uh, bot tower. And we see the Ash Arrow coming out and does get a kill onto Zion. Here comes Warwick looking for a pounce and actually misses. The Brawl comes out to disengage and Warwick gets stunned. Thresh tries to use the Lantern, but because the stun does not connect and Ari goes in, but the uh, the stun by, uh, by Nox kind of forces her to flash away. Although Thresh does get the shutdown onto Larson and that will uh, force Mary to fall back. So ultimately that was a two for one in favor of Marietta. Yeah, so Marietta will just take a Scuttle Crab because. All right, so we're at 16 minutes. Kills are 13 to 3, which sounds like a lot, because it is. And Marianne is up by over, it's like, almost 6,000 gold. And look at all the vision that Marietta has in Oberlin's uh, bot side jungle. They have so much vision, so they know exactly where that war is going to be going at any point in there. It looks like they're going to be uh, contesting the... The mid tower they do get it, and they may go for an engage onto Thresh, and that's exactly what they do and get him down. We see the ult going out onto Warwick, and he goes down, so that's two down for Oberlin. And Larson's gonna try to get a kill onto Ari. Actually, Malzahar gets the double kill. Showstopper comes out by set and gets the kill, so that's a four for nothing. So while Zaya is split pushing, everyone else for Oberlin died. So this will definitely be a tower. I don't think it's going to be enough to... They may continue to siege a little bit. Uh, Crestman should get this tower as well. Yeah, so they will continue their siege. But Overland is starting to come back, so they are going to have to back away.
So Ocean Drake will be up in one minute. So we already see Cowboy, he's clearing up some vision and trying to set up his own vision. And does spot out the Warwick and Ari. But Marina is resetting and they will head over to Ocean Drake. And so does Oberlin, so we may be seeing a team fight there. And Braum will get at least a stack onto Thresh. And the box comes out. But Braum's going to have to back away. He's getting hooked and he's going to get caught out. So that was a little over aggressive on Marianna's part. Going for a 2 for 3. And they're going to jump onto Ari. But actually they're going to get onto Warwick. Flashes are going out left to right. Uh, Warwick does go down. Zonya's outer nuts comes out for Ari. And uses the great move by there. Well actually never mind. It was great until she died. So they use the, the stopwatch. Oh, a great flash there by Nox to take to avoid the hit by Zaya. And Marina will secure the Ocean Drake. But yeah, I want to go back to that play with the uh, the stopwatch. So Thresh put out the lantern. Ari puts out the stopwatch so that as soon as it comes up, she can click on the lantern and gets away. But it was still taking too many ticks. I think uh, it was an Ignite or something. No, it wasn't. I think it was just normal ticks. And died anyway it was a good try there it was definitely one of those 200 iq plays and we do see well brahm and Cressman going like yeah fiora you wanted to uh take that tower you're here's a showstopper that was a i i don't even think i was trying to do a joke there that was just horribly done uh meanwhile marina will take the uh, the second rift herald At least they should before Baron comes out. Meanwhile, they, they spot out the Warwick and they're going to chase him. Which is odd because usually Warwick is the hunter and he's going to be the hunted. Meanwhile, Mary will just go ahead and take the, the red buff in their jungle. But 20 minutes into the game and Marion is up over 10,000 gold. So this is Marion's game to lose. So as long as they play smart, they can finish this out. And they're going to trap Zaya. So that's another kill for Marietta. So the question is, what will they go for next? I think they're just going to continue pushing the, the mid lane. And maybe try to open up some vision. They have Baron very well warded. And they get the Ash Arrow onto Ari, who has to get away. Flash and ease. Because I think your ease are one move. I can't remember if it's her charm or her other move. But anyway... Marion decides to push the, uh, they put down the Rift Herald onto the mid tower. Showstopper comes out for Crestman, and he should be able to finish off Fiora. So, like, Oberlin's trying to do these split pushes, but they don't have any vision, and they keep getting caught out. Like, they're so far behind that it's like a 1v1 in favor of Marietta every time, and they're going to have to start grouping up if they want to get back in this game, but Marion is not going to give them a chance. They've already got one inhibitor down. Zara out. Uh, Zara comes out. out. Braum gets his all out. So there's already one down for Raider. Two's down with uh, Fiora still down. And they're going to get Orwick. Although Ari is going to be able to get the shutdown onto Nox. But two inhibitors for uh, Oberlin's already down. Teleport's coming out for Crestman. They're going to try to see if they finish this game. So we do see the engage on two set. And he's getting poked down. They do get Ari down and Thresh. So two are down for Oberlin. And actually the rest of Oberlin are down. And it is an ace. Well, technically an ace. And the, the Nexus Towers do fall. And all that's left is the Nexus. And there you have it. The Nexus falls. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Marietta will take the series 2-0. I mean, that was just over. It's a very dominating performance uh, by Marietta, just getting the early kills. And Oberlin tried to make something happen, but they keep trying to push the lanes, but they were not respecting the lack of vision.
they were not respecting the 1v1 fights, and Marietta was able to punish him for that. So, um, I would do an interview, but I don't think anyone's available right now for that. So, uh, that's going to be it for us today. So, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, tonight, our PUBG team will be playing at 9 o'clock. So, be sure to go to twitch.tv slash collegiate PUBG. Uh, you can even, um, we'll, we'll have it hosted on our Twitch channel too, so you can come here to, to check it out as well. Uh, we'll have our Fortnite match uh, Monday, not Monday, but uh, Tuesday, 8 o'clock. I'll try to get it broadcasted. We'll, we'll see. I have to tinker around with some things. The League of Legends match against Mount Vernon will be on Thursday, 8 o'clock. And then Saturday at 4 o'clock will be our next C-Law match. And we'll find out who we're playing a little bit. And that will be our big charity drive for Versus Cancer. So... Please be sure to come join us on Saturday as we try to see if we can fight cancer. Um, I'll go over what we can do to help with it, but your support will be greatly appreciated. Please be sure to follow us on social media for all of what's going on with Marietta College Esports. So you can follow us on Twitter at Marietta Esports, Facebook.com slash Marietta College Esports, bit.ly slash Marietta College Esports for our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us here on Twitch. Uh, your subscriptions would also be greatly appreciated. Any uh, support for our esports program is always appreciated. So we thank you so much for all of you taking out your taking part of your early evening to join us. So for all of us here, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.